This humble bifold of fine American aluminum is actually the answer to one of turkeydom's greatest questions. Namely, how do you thoroughly cook dark meat, which we like at about 180 degrees, without overcooking the white meat, which we like to pull at about 161? Now, you could cut up the bird before you cook it, but come on, you want to deliver an American icon to the table, not a jigsaw puzzle. You could butterfly your bird, like we did the chicken in our classic episode, A Bird in the Pan, but you need a, a surgeon's bone saw to get through this one. Nope, the answer is the turkey triangle, and the secret is to form fit it before you actually need it. Just rub a little canola oil on the inside so that it doesn't stick, and then just mold it to the breast, kind of like a breastplate in a bad Wagner opera, like that. And the point of doing this ahead of time is so that when we really need it later, you won't have to squeeze it onto a 500 degree bird. There. Now the last step before we go into the oven is a quick canola rub down. A little bit of oil is going to promote browning by raising the and Verna. What are you doing? I was just lowering your oven, dear. You had it set too high. No, no, Aunt Verna. I, I started my turkeys in a ripping hot 500 degree oven because you need dry, intense heat to brown the skin. No, no, dear. Low and slow is the only way to go. No, actually, low and slow is, is, is no way to go. I mean, low and slow, the, the fat layer just melts and rolls off without browning the skin. A longer cooking time means drier meat. No, you go 500 degrees for 30 minutes. Then you slap on the turkey triangle, drop the heat to 350, and cook until the probe thermometer says 161. Then you rest it, you carve it, you eat it, and take a nap. I never liked you much anyway. A lot of my childhood questions just got answered. Roasting time is finally here. We have our 500 degree oven, and I like to put my turkeys in legs first. Since the dark meat can take a little bit more heat, and doesn't dry as easily. Now, I'm more concerned with time right now than temperature, so I'm going to use the timer function of this bad boy, set for 30 minutes. Now, so far, all of our times and equations have been based on no stuffing, so just stay away from the stuffing. Besides, we've got something a lot better on the way. Now, wash those turkey hands. Half an hour up already. Time for the turkey triangle. Oh yeah, we've got a lot of great color already. Definitely time to cover up the breast so that it won't overcook. Our pre-tailored turkey triangle goes on. Just tuck that corner up under the probe. And back in she goes. Or he. Oven goes down to 350 degrees. Since the cooking ain't over till the fat thermometer sings, you want to keep this door closed? No. No turkey tampering, okay? Now, a 14-pounder like our friend here is probably going to cross the 161-degree finish line in about another hour and a half. That'll make it a total of two hours of cooking. Granted, not every oven in the world is alike, and yours might take just a little bit longer. But don't worry. Just listen for the thermometer. You're just in time. We've just crossed the 161 magic line. Oh, sorry. This looks great. Exactly what we want. Good color, lots of juice, great. Now the temperature inside the bird will continue to increase for at least a few minutes. So don't cut into this and don't pull out the pop-up thermometer. You just want to let it rest. So while you're reheating your bread pudding and finishing the cranberry sauce, cover this with something to keep it cozy. You could use a, an inverted stainless steel bowl or, or even a, a big tin of foil. But uh, I find that the lid for my kettle grill wards off all poachers.